I am so excited to tell you about the incredible gift I've received. It's going to improve the life of one of my snakes in a way that neither of us could have imagined. Anu has no idea how awesome her world is about to become. A while back, I did a review of an enclosure I bought from Apex Reptile, and I loved it so much that I decided I'd eventually be buying them for almost all of my snakes as I could afford them. But the most pressing one to get was an upgrade for Anu. Despite keeping her in the recommended 4x2 habitat size, she's actually a little longer than 4 feet now herself, and I've noticed lately she seemed bored and sometimes restless in her current situation. I let Apex know that I was thinking about getting her a 6x2, but they did me one better. Way better. <laughs> One of the things that makes Apex stand out is that they create modular enclosures, and one of their most unique options is a corner enclosure. Anyone who keeps multiple reptiles knows that enclosures can cause dead space in the corner of a room, so I thought about trying a six-foot corner piece, but that would mean I wouldn't be able to stack my other four-foot enclosures on top of it. Well, the amazing folks at Apex offered me a 10-foot corner enclosure. That's two 4x2s attached to a 2x2 two two corner block. I've got a lot of rearranging to do in here, but it's going to be so worth it. Also, I'm pretty sure Anu is going to be the luckiest pet Mexican black king snake in the world. I've never heard of anyone giving their king snake that much room. I can't wait to see her exploring it. Now, this is going to be a massive endeavor because I'm also going to try my hand at my first DIY background build in order to utilize more of the vertical space and to make it look more naturalistic. So we're definitely splitting this into a series, but we'll start by assembling the enclosure and seeing how it looks. So let's slither on into it and get to building. Oh, that's cool. It looks like it's going to be totally flush with the face of the enclosure. Some of them, you'll see that the door actually is on top of the face, and this one just, just fits right in there. Ooh, it's going to be nice. Since this is a swing down door enclosure, and the last one I did was a sliding door, there's a difference in assembly here. When it's a swing down, you're gonna do the face and the door first, as opposed to a sliding door, which you assemble the block first and then do the doors last. So the top is where the vents are. You can use your own tools, but they did actually provide tools and some stickers. Ooh, that's neat. They have a keychain for the, the key to the lock, which is awesome. And it's got their little logo and they sent me a different color one this time. Black, cause she's an MBK. You'll see it has this inset that keeps the door from going inwards, but I am gonna need to take this film off. Before you actually really tighten everything, you just want to get it hand tightened so that everything's lining up well before you really go for it. You never want to tighten these too much on the door because you don't want it to crack, but you do have to definitely have to use a little bit of effort because it's a lock nut. Oh, that's no trick.
when you're connecting two blocks together, the piece that gets connected, you do not screw this side in at all. So I'm going to screw these two corners, but not this side. It's not exactly flush. You're going to feel a little bit of a little tiny bit of an overhang here, but that's how it fits. Now I'm going to do the top. So you want to wait until you screw the sides in um, until you do the top and the bottom. And in case you didn't watch my video from the first one I did, there are screw holes already made for you in the top and the bottom. So much dog hair everywhere, all inside the enclosure. It's on everything. <laughs> it's real nice to just snap into place. And if it's not lining up, you just need to square up a little bit better. So worst case, I can just open this gently pull out. Oh yeah, that does it. That makes it way easier. One of the most awesome features of Apex enclosures is that they have these notches for electrical cords that are all the way around the entire enclosure. So you can have your heating elements and lighting elements wherever you want and not have to worry about cutting a hole to get the cord out or that it has to be in a certain place. You have them all the way around. It's a great feature. This door is really awesome. Last time I did the sliding doors and I like them, uh, they're larger but the pull down door is just beautiful because it's uninterrupted viewing. So yeah, really excited. Let's move on to the two by two. So here is my corner cube and it took me a second to figure this out. So I just wanted to walk you through it. I have two pieces that look very similar to each other. They both have the, they're the connection points of the cubes. One has smaller notches than the other one does. We're taking this guy, which is a connection point. So we're gonna take the back. So now we have our other guy, which has the smaller wedges here. Remember how we had the sides with the arrows pointing down, right? Well, this time we're going to have the solid piece with the arrows pointing down. So the metal facing out. Do not try and just go straight in. It won't work. This is in my, the corner. So the, the, where the room, one wall meets the other, these go along that side. And then the forefoot comes off here and forefoot comes off there. Don't do what I do. <laughs> Vents should go at the bottom when you're assembling these things for the first time. <laughs> it's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> top you'll know because it has notches for all those cables any cables look how many notches there's so many notches
just wanted to note that when you are doing a corner piece, which means there are three sections, make sure that you are creating a mirror. I made the mistake of making the exact same box in the exact same way and had to take it apart because obviously you need it to be mirrored in order to connect to the corner piece. Now that I've gotten the other four footer in the right arrangement, I'm gonna start connecting them and um, I, then I'm going to take them apart so that I can do the background work inside. They're each done individually so that I can carry them and put them together in place because otherwise it would just be impossible to move. Let's see how they look when they're connected together. If I can fit them on this table, we'll see. do the other one. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. <laughs> and normally the doors would swing all the way down and be out of your way. I'm going to have them up on shelves so they will be able to swing all the way down but right now they're about to hit each other. So that's a thing to note. If you got one this big, then you're going to want to have them up on their own shelves so that the doors can swing all the way down before you do the final bolting together. So at least we see how it's going to look, which is awesome. Look at how cool that is. All right, so that's the assembly video. The next step is going to be very fun. I'm going to try my hand at putting some rock-like shelves into the backs so she has multi-levels to climb around on so she can use that vertical space. I'll probably put a few live plants in there, although this isn't going to be a bioactive enclosure, but at least I'll have some live plants. Uh, Ani likes to crush plants, so they're going to have to be some really robust plants that she can't easily kill because she has wrecked every other plant that I've tried to put in her enclosures. I'm really excited to give her some UVB. I've been wanting to try Luminize for a while. I, I bought it thinking I can put it on one side of the enclosure and then I have some LED grow lights that will go on the other part of the enclosure to help the live plants and make sure that the whole thing is lit. Once I start carving the foam, I will be doing some great stuff to fill in the cracks and um, then I will be using dry lock and tints to make it look a bit more natural. Now, I have never done this before, but I was very inspired by Victoria from Passionate Snakes and Brad's Bioactive Builds them and many others have done some really incredible backgrounds. Taking on doing this for the first time in this large of an enclosure is a bit ambitious. <laughs> so hopefully I don't screw it up, but I will document the process and we'll see how that goes. Oh, and of course, before I do any of this, uh, I will be cleaning out the inside and siliconing around the bottoms. 100% silicone is safe for the animal and also it needs to cure for a week before you put an animal inside. Even if you're not doing a background, whatever, if you're siliconing, give it a week. For the silicone, I'm going to clean and uh, get rid of the dog hair that's pretty much everywhere inside there. I am going to be putting the heat on the inside as well. So the UVB and the heat uh, ceramic heat emitter or um, deep heat projector will go inside of this cage in the inside so that she cannot climb on the bulb itself and hurt herself. As you can see, the whole top is closed because I am definitely going to be putting two other enclosures on top. However, they're sending me a screen top for the corner piece. And I'm gonna see how that goes with temps and all of that, but having some more airflow in there, I don't think is a bad thing. And because it's on the corner, it won't inhibit me from stacking the two other 
enclosures on top. I'm waiting on that piece, um, and the great part about these enclosures is you can always take the tops off. Yeah, I can't speak highly enough of Apex enclosures. I mean, they are just so beautiful and versatile, the interchangeable elements. I am so grateful that they sent me this. I think they're fantastic, so I highly recommend them. And hopefully this helps you if you plan on getting one yourself. And I'll see you next time for more snake therapy with DIY projects. All right. Bye. <laughs>